Before the Memorial Hall was opened, Northwich lacked a cultural hub that allowed the people to congregate into one clear community. Northwich Urban District Council applied for permission to develop land on Chester Way on the 19th of December 1957 to build the new Memorial Hall, and they were granted on the 26th of August 1958. The hall was opened for the first time on the 1st of June 1960 by Major Sir A. Harold Bibby and was built as a memorial to the servicemen who did not return home to their families after two world wars. We spoke to veteran Roy Cottrell who was there when the memorial hall first opened and met Harold Bibby himself. First of all, I was standing down the side of the memorial hall which was facing the road. And as I I was standing there, listening to all the, the, uh, all the chattering and the shouting and the, the clapping and the, the speeches that were going on. And as I was standing there, the crowd in front of us parted, and in front of us parted, and Sir Harold Bibby came round. He was the chap that opened it. And because the plate, the only plate that you see in the memorial hall now, the old wall plate, was on the outside wall facing the house, facing the police station to you. The memorial hall was host to a variety of notable events, many of which holding a memorable place for the staff of the hall. Terry Pratchett made an appearance for a book signing and was greeted by crowds of fans waiting for him. During the second beer festival to be held at the hall, all the barrels had to be moved from the middle to the outside of the hall as the weight was causing the floor to collapse. The hall was also used during the time when the River Weaver flooded the bullring and was used as a refuge for evacuated residents. Various gigs performed by a variety of artists were held at the hall, some of which being quite well known, such as the Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd and the Charlatans. During their concert, the floor collapsed due to the audience dancing too hard. But of course, the most notable band to have played there at the hall was the Beatles. We played the most Saturday nights. Um, and most Thursday nights, but the, you know, the nice part about it, although we supported many big bands at that time, we didn't realise how big they were going to be. The small town of Northwich had one of the biggest bands in the world play at their memorial hall, not once, but five times in two years. This venue was actually an audition for the Beatles. If they performed well, then Lewis Buckley, who organised several beat dancers around the country, would hire them for other venues. Fifty years later, a Beatles cover band performed at the same venue, showing the monumental impact that the Beatles had in Northwich. The last, the last band we supported um, was a band from Liverpool uh, called Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. Now Ringo Starr was a drummer with Rory Storm, and then when the Beatles as such we started to come a bit big. And I went to the Memorial Hall for a Met Hill four times to see Acker Bilk and his jasmine. And that was wonderful. We used to go to the Young Farmers dances, which was on a Tuesday night. And they were really good. I didn't originate from Northwich. I came to Northwich in 1968 when I got married. So it's uh, quite, in, in, quite interested to see where the old police station was. And I've heard of some of the old pubs, the old timers talk about the old pubs, and quite interested to see where the pubs were, what they were. But I did come to Northwich in the early 60s uh, to the Memorial Hall, because in those days it was, uh, it was sort of the place to be on a Saturday evening. They got all the top pop groups. You could guarantee on a Saturday night there would be somebody worth seeing every Saturday. So yeah, I came on that, yeah. While the Memorial Hall was still culturally significant to Northwich, it did begin to lose its strength as time went on. Instead of having a variation of legendary bands such as Pink Floyd and The Cure, the hall began to make way for more local music, such as Dusk and Beaver. Even as the hall's strength diminished, it was still a stable hold of the community, as it offered a variety of activities for Northwich's local residents to participate in, such as dance classes and various council meetings. While Memorial Hall, 
has been officially closed since March the 2nd, 2013, its legacy will live on in the memories of the people of Northwich. I was brought on as lead artist to work for the Cheshire West and Chester Council uh, in Northwich on the you know, big regeneration that's happening here. We're working on the Memorial Hall as one of the developments. They're knocking it down and when I was doing my research I, I realised there was nothing out there. Um, so it was important to kind of find that history to, to bring people in to actually talk with them and, and just um, record their memories. So we set up this memory collection really as a way of creating a legacy for the Memorial Hall and as, a, as an extension of that for Northwich itself. Uh, we've also uh, custodians who are looking forward to the future so any change that goes, is going on in the present will quickly become something of the past. So it's good for, uh, for us in terms of we keep an eye on the change, if there are any material or um, any kind of evidence that we can uh, keep for the museum, whether it's things that we take uh, images of or whether it's actually um, objects or documents relating to it. So it's all helping to build up the collections and in years to come that will reflect uh, this period of change. But looking at it, it seems that there's a great potential for Northwich to, to be renovated and have much more, um, much, a much better environment for people to enjoy. We've decided to go ahead and do it, so let's hope it works, yeah, let's hope it works. It's going to be uh, again, reinvigorated and, and, and um, uh, given a new lease of life with a, a civic function that will uh, benefit uh, all the users of the town. No town stands still, does it? Uh, obviously, if you look at Northwich, there are a lot of the turn of the century buildings, the black and white buildings, which I guess is what it's known for. But then there are all the, the 1960s, 70s developments, Moray Hall, the police courts, the magistrates' courts, the council offices. Uh, Weaver Square, up to the newer ones, the newer supermarkets, um, and that that are in town now. Uh, so nowhere stands still. I mean, behind here used to be a football ground behind the library. It was with Albion's football ground when I first moved here. I was sorry to say that it was going to be knocked down initially, as most people were, because uh, there's a lot of nostalgia there. We were there in the 60s, blah, blah, blah. But looking at it sensibly, it's gone past its sell-by date. And as long as they replace it with something as good, if not better, which got to be, then I'm, I'm not against the thing, no, not at all. Well, it's probably a good thing the Memorial Hall was a bit uh, dated and a bit retro 70s. In a way, I don't mind that it's being pulled down as long as something is put in its place. Um, something nice is put in its place, something you know, um, aesthetically pleasing is put in its place. So, yeah, places have to, have to move on. And I think they have to move on, I mean, personally speaking, I think they have to move on in a, a kind of positive way. I mean, you can't always keep looking back. While one door closes, another opens. The closing of the Memorial Hall has made way for a new leisure centre that is set to be opened as soon as January 2015. Jeff Hope Terry, chairman of the Weaver Valley Partnership Board, commented on the subject by saying, as well as being an important development in terms of new facilities, the proposed centre will also occupy a key site for regeneration of the town. The leisure centre will offer the people of Northwich a change in opportunities, as well as the ability to partake in new activities, while still keeping the social factor that's made it so dear to the residents of Northwich.
definition of legacy really is a handing down of sort of information and some of the memories I think from the past into the future. Um, the project artist um, has worked very hard as part of this project in terms of the memory collect project to capture the memories and recollections of users of the existing memorial hall um, and she'll be using some of those ideas and incorporating them within the new build. So currently she's looking at putting a timeline within the main street area and alongside that timeline putting on some of the main events and also putting on some of the phrases and the quotes actually captures part of the process. Um, so that's what we're looking to include that and in terms of sort of the future process going forward, obviously the new events, you know, it, it, it in itself will create a legacy for the future. I'm Jacqueline McCormick, I'm the dance director at Cheshire Dance and we were approached by Katia Yoon who's the lead artist on the Collect Memorial project and she was really interested in getting some live action as part of the project and we've done quite a lot of, Cheshire Dance has done quite a lot of outdoor performances involving lots and lots of participants so we jumped at the chance to be part of Collect Live um, which is happening March the 2nd this year. give people the opportunity to say some goodbyes because obviously some people have quite intense memories from the, the hall. I think it will also allow um, people to again what, to celebrate the town, celebrate what's to come. So I think rather than it being this quiet thing of it slipping away and nobody knowing anything and then suddenly coming up in arms when they see the new building it really prepares people for that and i think coming outside into the town dancing getting people excited is a fantastic way to get people excited about the future of the memorial court today to be allowed to speak about the memorial hall not many cheshire west councillors can say if any they have performed here. I have. I performed here with the Mid Cheshire Operatic Society and I was a guest singer with the Flandullis Male Voice Choir here a few years ago. We are now looking forward to the redevelopment of the Memorial Hall to provide a modern, high quality venue for the people in this area.